celestial half out of the Earth's crust sitting right. in the ocean. Like, oh my God, that cannot be ignored. That is yeah. a... Which has been my point. That That's why I said, like, look, I need to get an idea of exactly where everything is supposed to be at this point in time. Because for, to have something like that that just appeared, the Earth cracked open for a moment to allow this beast to start the process of opening. But more importantly, and I guess we should go through the beginning to end and then we can get to it. But like, yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Like, it's such a, it's such a meta, mega story, right? Um, of humanity and the, his, the history of humanity, and our very, our very existence was to to give birth to this. To, we're, we're we're basically here celestial. to feed an egg. We're basically yeah. here to be an egg feeder. <laughs> we were kind of in a open like. If, if you have chickens are, uh, you know, you have chickens who are running around free range. Well, we were free range matrix batteries yes. running around exactly for this thing. And if I'm if I'm someone like I uh, say, um, if I'm a Nick Fury up in space, and I see this thing <laughs> coming out of the ocean, and we go down there and we discover what this is all about. Our very existence, how we think of ourselves, our purpose in life, la da da. It ch completely it, changes. It's huge. It's huge. But I think it even stands one more step even further. The fact that even though that, that celestial is not only just in the ground, but it still carries all the powers that the celestials have. It might not be awake, but yeah. it carries that same power. So, what does that mean for people who manage to tap into it? This dormant right. power vessel, you know, and mm. you see that there's an unlimiting source because they're all networked through the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so is it? It's asleep or dead? I think it's. I, I think it's no longer going to wake up. But I don't know if dead is the correct term for it. See, I heard all kinds of theories that it it allowed itself to die. Um, all kinds of see. I, I don't see. I have to go back and watch that last bit again. I don't remember anything in there that said. This thing, I don't think it's gonna wake up or be active anymore. Yeah, like I don't think it's gonna be active anymore. But like, there must have, but this thing coming out of the ground must have caused tsunamis and you <laughs> literally are changing the earth. Like the temperature of the earth would have had to change because it's breaking it apart. <laughs> I know, like, I mean, rising, it was breaking the earth apart. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard of accounts of Krakatoa, like no. how Krakatoa, you know, it was an earthquake, no earthquake, a, a volcano exploded not near, not far from here in Indonesia. Yeah. That covered half the planet in soot for like right. a month or six months, right? It could be heard like a gunshot in Australia. That's how loud Krakatoa. If that happened with just a volcano. <laughs> when, when, when a planet-sized entity is coming out of the earth like that should have been that and this is why i keep saying i don't understand where the the events of the eternals and hawkeye because hawkeye yeah. is going to, to be the furthest out at this point it Eternals can't be. Be somewhere it can't be because this just this should stop the world this should stop it, it, the world and thing, everyone the discussion so much about about the uh, effects of uh, Infinity Wars and Endgame are still resonant. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those elements, remember, it, it was supposed to be like everybody came back and then it was like a week later that everything was supposed to be kicking off. Yeah, yeah, so because... It happened way at the beginning. So if I remember correct, the, the, the Titan was ready to give... was ready to birth and then Thanos snaps... Right, and they lose half their half their batteries. Exactly. And so the Titan can't come back. Exactly. They snap it. He comes back, and it's game on again. Right? Okay, he's back. Let's get this. Um, exactly. So Thanos, Thanos, Thanos did us a favor, right? He bought us time. <laughs> yeah, he bought us time, and but the this you know the. I don't know. Then the Celestials figure it all out thanks to Ajax. 
The Eternals and, figured it out. The Eternals. Sorry, what did I say? You said the Celestial. Sorry, the Celestial, the, the, giant godlike and Eternal. Yeah, yeah. I, I just got it. I just flipped yeah. it down. <laughs> so what we have here then is Ajax telling everyone, "Hey, by the way, this is the stuff's Taking going off." What she, you know? So remember, like before the movie started, we all were like wondering, like, why the Eternals didn't do anything before? They were like, "Oh, maybe they their memories had been erased, and they're just coming back to." Or something to that effect. But clearly is not the situation. The Eternals are completely lucid, have been completely a part of this whole event and process. Nothing has been forgotten. They just had gone their own ways after uh, the last of the Deviants had ended, what, 5,000 years prior? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, It was just a, such an incredible amount of story and incredible so amount of stuff that went on. Um Basically, how the Eternals have been the replicants of the mythological gods that yeah. over the history. Athena being uh, what Angelina Jolie's character, and yeah. uh, Hermes being the the deaf uh, speedster one. Uh, yeah. Oh man. I, and I guess if you want to go back and rethink the whole premise of the movie, and you want to think about why they. At least I see Ajax knew what was happening the whole time. She, I don't think she exactly. gets her memory erased. So if she knows, she never that, got that, her memory erased. She just, she, uh, yeah. Well, she, they, they, she, they, she keeps her memory. Oh, yeah, she doesn't. She knows that Thanos is snap. So the idea, why didn't they intervene with Thanos? Well, she knew that if Thanos snapped it, it was going to buy humanity more time. But right? it was never her job to interfere with. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But she. Ah oh, man, so there just has to be ramifications for that big bloody thing coming out of it. Go, just right. keep going back. There has to be ramifications about the understanding now of celestials. There has to be understanding now of eternal. And also, also the understanding of deviants because deviants were yeah. built for the exact same pur- purpose. Because it's not a secret, right? We've got we've got Jon Snow who knows it. Kit Harrington's character knows it. In his he way. knows all the deeds because the- uh, what's your name told him. Yeah, we've got the guy with the video camera, the Indian guy. That he right. was very cool. Which was great. To he have was feeling the nations following like that is great. Really- <laughs> so he knows it all. Yeah. So it's not going to be a. It's going to be a rethinking of everything. And, and Nick Fury freaked out. Freaked out when Thor came. He freaked out even more. And everyone thought freaked out with Thanos. Now yeah. this is even deeper. <laughs> this is hardcore. Rethinking of our existence. What are these celestials going to come back? How do we stop them? Can we stop them? They're in no position to stop them. Yeah. Um, Nick Fury's up there with his little space station, but can they stop a celestial? Of course. Um, except except for through. We, we only have one celestial that we've shown that has been stopped. And then, you know, they're remastering this because they have to now, which was. Evil. Well, then it's a matter of, well, who stopped this? This birth, it was Eternals. Let's go find some more Eternals. Harry Styles kind of showed us that there are more Eternals out there. Well, from what I understand, Harry Styles' character actually isn't an Eternal. He's actually supposed to be the former brother of Thanos. Oh, that's right, Thanos. He's a god type. Yeah. Um, Eros. Um, right. So, and the, and the funny thing is, that I thought about this later, is that they, they reboot these Eternals from, like, and they reboot, reboot them and time again. And yeah. their memories are still stored in, you know, a little filing cabinet up there in, you know, Celestial City. So essentially all those Icarus and all them can come back. Not these versions of Icarus, not knowing what he knows now, but right. a previous... A previous, a previous version Icarus wouldn't have, can But that's the back. thing. But, but if, if you get too much, if they get too much mixture, that's what you get what's going on with Athena where... Her mind will flip out and then yeah, yeah. attack, or they'll, they'll basically they go like a full, uh, full, um, Alzheimer's. Like, yeah, yeah, Alzheimer's. yeah. Like, she was, she had a, a screw loose there, didn't she? And exactly. And, um, I mean, I was, I was into this movie right from the start, and I never lost interest in this. I, I'm a bit shocked at people not liking this movie that much. And I, I think the only, uh, the only issue that I can significantly tell that I would say was a big issue for would come is the issue of the deviant. 
We started building right. up the villain, and then they yeah. killed him off before we finally got some real answers. Yeah, the deviant because didn't the really. Was... Yeah. Yeah, the deviant. Like the thing is, Devi you're right. I agree with you totally on that. The video was built out. We built up. We thought, okay, in this showdown, which is going to come between the Celestials, the Eternals, the deviant's going to play a role. Well, right. not really. That would. It was just became obvious at the end that they were just a plot device. Exactly. And once they weren't needed, they were killed. It, it, you just, it just really didn't pay it off a, anything. It was a bad red herring because yeah. they, they literally developed an actual interesting storyline. Like, it was evolving. Yes. It was, what was the final evolution going to end up being? Like, don't if you're going to play it as a red herring, do not make them interesting. <laughs> yeah, don't make yeah. them more interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was... A dis I thought there's a couple of things that disappointed. I didn't like the fact that Kit Harrington's character... Did nothing. Just, dis just disappeared, right? For, yeah. And then Piers, I think, on a mobile phone call, and then at the end, he at walks the end, along. Where, where he basically was going to reveal that for some reason he's a Black Knight or there's Black Knight action. Yeah. Like, so know. I I I think that he should have been the one. He should have been the one that – I know that we talk about that Indian guy with the camera being very cool. Yeah. But essentially he – Should have been where that guy was – what it, I'm not saying they should have walked around with the camera, right? But he should have been that character in that part of the film, and and just the heart of the, of the heart yeah. of the, of humanity in that. Yeah. Picture. Um, and I'm still the other criticism I heard was that there were just too many Eternals to get into as characters. See, still reflecting on that. I thought they gave everybody about the right amount of time. Like I don't know how much time you need to understand a person like Icarus. He flies. He's he's yeah. super loyal. He's conflicted inside. He's basically MCU Superman. He oh, he's Homelander. He's, he's Homelander. Homelander. He, I, he's, that's he's, immediately he's at the end sociopathic. when he's fighting with everyone. I'm thinking you're Homelander. He's he's less sociopathic Homelander because oh yeah for sure in insecurity he has a loyalty point except for the point that he's loyal to a fault. Which to be honest with you, in take away us being humans, which is what attaches us to it and makes him more evil. He's not wrong. Like, yeah. you have celestials. You're birthing gods. How many planets? Like, who yeah. really has more value on a point-to-point -point basis? Especially yeah, yeah. if you're doing this battling in space. Yeah. <laughs> he's that. He's kind of a little bit of Peacemaker, a little bit of Homelander. Right. Uh, a little bit of all these kind of highly idealistic, but lacking sympathy, lacking empathy, which is what we as people we want to see our character show heart and care exactly and he's kind of like no we're sticking to the job description stick to the plan. but the reason why we only consider him to be the villain is because it would affect us as if we were yeah. in that place yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I mean, but I, I i think icarus gets a good go i think cersei gets a good go i really yeah. liked Gilgamesh, I liked him on the screen when he was on there um, yeah i feel so like that, i feel like he was one person who was robbed a little bit of of personality. Yeah, I, I, like, I think taking care of Athena, but yeah, I, that. Angelina Jolie was her Athena was pretty good. I, um, I was impressed. I was impressed by how much she actually played into it because up until this point, I would never have considered Angelina Jolie to be ever considering to do mm. a Marvel movie. I would have put her into that same route as uh, Ridley Scott or. Uh, Martin Scorsese, and it's it's Italy. funny that she is the A lister as yeah the, the 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 beauty of beauties in the you know plays the one who's fractured has right the, is the one who's got the screw loose. Um, I think I half expected Ajax to die or something early in the piece. Like she was always going to be absent. Right in the trailers, you don't see. Never see one's very prominent anywhere in the trailer, and it felt <laughs> like she was the. She was the wise one who was going to part the wisdom and then disappear. Right. Uh, the guy, the guy who who could change people's minds, thought that he was kind of interesting. That he might have been a little bit undercooked. I think he was a little undercooked too. Uh, I, I think he was so. I think it's because he's so idealistic. I feel like it's one of those situations where he's too powerful. So yeah. like, if you don't yeah. underplay him, like, what can he do? Like, you can't get inside the yeah. mind of this. You control this. Like outside of the most powerful mind ever. Yeah. Like, then there's the there's the fast girl. She was cool, right. the one. And yeah. then there was 
uh, what's his name? Uh, the dude who the technological guy. I can't remember. He was name. good. I really liked that character. Yeah. I thought I love. I do love the bit in there when he he. I think it's out. It was you know he sees. I think he's at Hiroshima, Hiroshima or something yeah. like that, and he's just pondering over all the ideas that he brought humanity, all the inventions he thought he was bringing goodness. He thought he's being technology that would enhance humanity. And he realizes that all this stuff that he brought in the world had turned around and turned into weapons of mass destruction. And I thought that's really a science fiction-y exploration idea that, you know, that's a really, that was a really good one, I thought. But of course, because... I also think, but at the same time, I think it's also simple. It was one of those that again, what I guess, which was the pur purpose is the simplification that we always hear of uh, humanity is damned, everybody sucks, everybody's yeah. evil, nothing good happens, and it's like, well, no, because clearly something good, which they did try and mention, like, yeah, well, it's, 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 it's some parody or, or at minimum, it's like, yo, humanity can can be double edged sword, like it does both good and it does both evil. Yeah, um, kind of that um, the fifth element type of thing. Right. I don't know if you remember the fifth, but at the end of it, she, you know, she, Bruce Willis has to convince this girl that there's more to humanity than just the wars and the death, right. and there has to be love, and that's that's quite a few movies that do that, and this movie kind of touched on that. Um, but I, 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 I was totally enthralled in this movie, and I'm enthralled about how they're going to start dealing with everything we talked about, all the ramifications. What are they going to yeah. do with this? Um, what are they? Where are going to take all this? It. it what I, I noticed is that there's no other characters. I don't think there's any other MCU characters in this. So I thought for sure, like if this was any other type of movie, and that's a very deliberate thing on their part. Like yeah. they really wanted this to exist in its own bubble. You know, I expected there to be a post credit sequence where we would see Nick Fury roll Solo, up and say, what the, what the hell is this? Right. Like I expected Hawkeye to turn up with, Nick Fury and go, what is this? But no, they kind of restrain themselves. They refer to the Avengers, of course, and I'm stuff like that. Too. But no, they kept this really, really independent in the MCU. And but I, they can't do it anymore, right? They did it in that film. They kept its own thing, but they can't right. do it again, right? Either they. Well, they, we they, they got, I think they low key connected it over with Guardians of the Galaxy, using utilizing uh, uh, Harry Styles' character. Yeah, um, yeah. But obviously not directly. But I think the issue that now comes, like you said, it's it's how does it tie together? And honestly, I think this is their way, and I, I know we're all looking for it, but I really do think this is their way of kickstarting in the mutant element without kickstarting in the mutant element. That's why I said, like, this celestial sitting with all this power, like, this doesn't make sense that it's not going to get tapped into in some way, yeah. shape, or form. Because it's it create it's a power that creates life, which was the Eternals, you know, yeah. like. So I'm going to go on a limb and say, this, you know, if if it, this has to take place after Hawkeye, to me, I, or else everyone would be talking about it, right? It would be, and the same with Spider Man. It, this would have everybody talking. This would have everybody. This would be taking the front news of everything. Huge creature found sticking out of the crust of the earth. So right. I'm going to I'm going to have to think that this is going to take place after uh Spider-Man 3 and Hawkeye. Let's remind our friends to please click on the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know when we have new videos out. Subscribe. 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 Oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God.